I think this is something that you don't hear a lot about, and just to be clear for people, the book is called The God Delusion, but it isn't just about the Judeo-Christian God. I think, uh, and you go to links in the beginning of this book to talk about how it becomes, it's the term that encompasses anything. So whichever version of a God or, or deity you believe in, uh, monotheistic or polytheistic, whatever, you're talking about all of them, right? Uh, right off the bat, what's wrong with, in your opinion, with believing in a God, regardless of who the God is? I think it's false. Uh, I think that it's um, a matter of belief without evidence. And as a scientist and as an educator, I like the idea that we believe things because there's evidence. Why, why, why get into this? Uh, well, as I said, I, I do think it's a tragedy that uh, when there is so much to know, for which there is such a lot, a lot of evidence, uh, I do think it's a tragedy that people are being actively led astray by medieval or pre-medieval superstitions and Bronze Age myths uh, written down uh, more than 2,000 years ago. Uh, that is such a loss, and so that's one of the reasons for trying to, to um, fight against it. Well, I just wanted to be sure. So you don't believe in any god anywhere? Any god anywhere would be completely incompatible with with, with, with anything that I've said. Now, one of the things that th there is out there right now is there's this, there's two books on the New York Times bestseller list right now. Dawkins, The God Delusion, and the other one is Sam Harris, A Letter to a Christian Nation. Now, as for Mr. Dawkins, basically what he does is he takes the best of science and says look how great we are rah 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 and he takes the worst of religion and he says look how horrible they are boo down with religion you know not really fair science is has a lot of good in it it also has a lot of bad we tend to forget there's a lot of bad science in the world for instance uh, there was a move in the United States in the early 20, uh, 20th century, in the 1920s, to basically sterilize poor people because they were seen scientifically as unworthy of breeding. That, that was a scientific theory. That scientific theory manifest in the Nazi movement because the Nazis believed in the science of eugenics, that they were actually a superior race and they believe that the Jews were an inferior race. That's science, that's not religion. So Dawkins doesn't talk about that science. Science is only what's good and what's wonderful and what's... So science has its downside as well. Now religion has its downside also. But it's just, it's kind of an unfair fight when you take the best of science, the worst of religion, and, and write a book about that. And just say, hey, religion's the, uh, the science is the answer, religion's evil. Sam Harris, Another person, uh, gee, isn't religion horrible? It's caused all these wars. Well, gee, what was the 20th century? World War I? Was that about religion? Wasn't that nationalism? World War II? Was that about religion? Wasn't that fascism? All the Cold Wars? Weren't those about communism? Communism's anti-religion. So the 20th century, the bloodiest century in human history, is all wars that weren't fought about religion. They were fought about ideologies. So I think the problem is a human problem. It's not the problem of religion. Humans are the problem. So religion's okay. We need to get rid of all the humans. <laughs> because animals are just being true to their nature. The question is, are we being true to our nature? That's the question. And religion says no. And you know why? Because God expects a lot more from you than you expect from yourself. So, if you want to ask me, I would say it's not our religions that have failed us, Sam Harris, Mr. Dawkins. It's we that have failed our religions. So I turned to him, and this is what I said. I looked at him and I went, uh, God bless you. Yeah, I said it like that. I said it like that. God bless you. This is what the guy comes back with, okay? Here's where it starts to get out of control. The guy looks at me in very condescending he goes, uh, yeah, I'm an atheist. Yeah, what a jerk, right? I'm trying to be polite. I don't know you're an atheist, right? And even if I did, what am I supposed to say when an atheist sneezes? Uh, when you die, nothing happens. As I'm telling him about my uh, religious background, he's laughing at me. He is laughing at me. He's giggling. He's like, you believe this? This is what... <laughs> uh, uh. 
now for his own entertainment, he says to me, let me ask you this. <clears throat> what do you believe happens to you after you, um, after you die? And I said, uh, okay, well, um, hopefully I live a good life and my soul goes to heaven. And when I get there, all my ancestors will be waiting for me like it's an airport. Hey, what's up? Guess who's dead, sucker? Ah, come here. Come here, float over here. Check this out. So he's laughing at my beliefs. And finally, I just snap back. What about you? Okay, what about you? All right? What happens to you? You're an atheist. What does that mean? What happens to you after you die? Now he gets very serious, like he's going to school me, okay? He looks, he goes, oh, I can tell you, young man. I can tell you. I know what's going to happen to me after I die. After I pass on, my body will become one with this earth. From there, I will become a fertilizer for this planet. And with that, I will return as a huge, beautiful tree. That's what this guy believes. He's laughing at me. He's going to come back as a fucking ficus. And I'm, and, yeah. Yeah. Johnny Weeping Willow over here. I wanted to slam this guy so bad for this, right? But then I stopped. I stopped, you guys. Please hear me out. I let it sink in, and I want you to as well. I hope when he dies, he does become a tree. I hope he, he's in the middle of the wilderness, and he's doing his tree thing, whatever it is trees do. I know they do a lot of work with breezes. And wouldn't it be fantastic if while he was out there just enjoying his treeness, through the woods, a huge sweaty guy with an axe comes along. Sees him. <laughs> chops him down, smash. Put a chain around him, drag him through the mud and the muck. Throw him into a sawmill, grind him up. <laughs> then you pound him down into paper. And once he's paper, you print the Bible on him. The only argument for atheism is the absence of evidence for God. But the problem here is that the absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. Thus, in the case of God, I do not think that the absence of evidence is at all a positive argument against the existence of God, and yet that's all he's had to offer you tonight on behalf of atheism. So I don't think we've seen any good reason to think that atheism is true. Can you give me any empirical evidence for explosions, not assumptions, uh, but some empirical evidence for explosions producing states containing more order and complexity? I mean, you're yeah, arguing, I can think of one. You're arguing in a circle if you're saying. I can think of one. We run out of milk, and I got to get some milk, so I drive to the store. There's an explosion happening in that engine, and it got me some milk in my refrigerator. Well, there's an example, isn't it? It's a controlled explosion. Uh, you'd have to agree that in, an engine is designed by intelligence. Yeah, I think so. so. That was a pretty good theistic argument. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs>